So uh, we will call the, uh, the our virtual meeting here to order. Um, the, uh, the first hearing we have is uh, the 7 p.m. hearing. It's a request for a, a finding by Mr. Peter Pacosta, 102 Bay Road, to rebuild an existing garage which doesn't uh, meet the required zoning property setbacks. Mr. Pacosta, I see you're online. Uh, would you like to tell us what, you're, what you'd like to do here? Yes, so I told the prior building inspector that we would just like to build the garage two feet longer towards the front of the garage and eight inches wider towards the house. And the prior building inspector said, we have to do this, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, the front of the garage extending two feet further towards the road is still within eight feet from the front of the house. Um, what's what's the current status of of the uh, of the garage? Um, it's old and kind of um, kind of rotted out on one side. It's kind of more like a shed, and so the garage we would like to replace it from is costing twenty thousand dollars. They're gonna um, go over the existing slab with four inches of concrete and rebuild a beautiful garage that's two feet longer and about a half a story higher and it's going to make the property look a lot better and the neighborhood nicer someone wants to come on brian or andrew i'm sorry um, so if I understand correctly, you're raising the existing structure and then putting a new structure on the existing pad, albeit extending and re-pouring a little bit on top? Yes, right on the existing structure, and it's only two feet extended towards the front, towards the front of the house, which is still eight or ten feet from the front of the house. The house at 102 Bay Road is way back from the street. It's probably 30, 40 feet from the back of the street off Bay Road. Um, and it's eight inches wider, which will be eight inches wider towards our house, not towards our neighbor's house, um, Robin and Ann's house. I don't know their last name. Are you? It's going to be a half inch, or I mean, it's going to be a half story higher. So it'll have, it'll be a, um, a steep pitch and it'll be six feet from the top of the um, first floor to um, the ridge. So when you walk up there, you have to bend down and it's just storage for the house because we don't have much storage and we don't have a basement. It's an old restored um, 1834 schoolhouse. And who abuts you on the side that you're encroaching upon closer? Um, Robin and Ann is towards the side of the, Robin and Ann is towards the side of the garage. And they said there's no, they told us there's no problem with that. And then on the other side of the um, property is a yellow house. And that is, um, Larry and Martha. I don't know their last names. We're selling, we're currently selling our house right now at 29 West Street in Hadley. And it's on the market now. When we sell that, we're going to mo actually move into the house ourselves. It's been a rental property for the last 30 years. We bought it about a year and a half ago. Okay. When you say you bought it, you mean you bought Bay Road? Yes. And you're gonna to move to Bay Road? We bought Bay Road about a year and a half ago. And we're downsizing our house on the corner of Cemetery Road and West Street. 29th Street. It's on the market now. We're selling that. And I'm retired from the Air Force. My wife is retiring from the um, school um, system. And um, we plan on moving into that, like, as soon as we fix the garage up and sell our house. That being Bay Road, you're going to move into Bay Road. Yes. I just want to be clear. Are you going to be destroying the current pad for the shed? and rebuilding it or uh, extending it? 
Yes. So the, the, the current garage is going to be taken down. We're building it um, with a company called a company from West Springfield that builds these house, these garages. It's we're going to take, have them remove it. It's going to be extended two feet further in the front and eight inches wider towards the house. So it'll be eight inches wider and two inches, or I mean, two feet further in the front. If you look at the um, paperwork I submitted about two or three months ago from the, to the prior um, building inspector. And he said, there shouldn't be a problem with that. Okay, so you, oh, forgive me. There, okay. Okay, so you're only encroaching upon your, you're not encroaching upon the property line. You're, you're extending eight inches towards the exi existing house, correct? Yes, eight inches toward our house and then towards our house and two feet further towards the front of the road, towards the road. And the garage is towards the back of the, the old schoolhouse, schoolhouse. So it's probably like the garage is about, I don't know, 10 or 15 feet from the front of the house. So it's only coming two feet adjacent to the house. So it's only coming two feet further um, on the driveway. Okay. Are, you guys able, are you guys able to see my, my screen share? Yeah. Yes. So, um, Peter, is, are you, you're, the, it's, you're moving two feet towards the front of the house and then you're moving eight inches to the left there, if you're looking at that, the way it's oriented on? Exactly, eight inches towards the house and then two feet towards the front of the garage. And so the non, it, the non-conformity though, the existing non-conformity is it's too close on the right and on the back. Yes. So we will, we won't be going towards the back or to the right. But is this encroaching at all on the frontage? No. Okay. Well, you're you're extending the structure two feet towards the frontage, but not encroaching upon the frontage. Right, but not encroaching on the neighbors or towards or the front of the house at all. The front of the house is about um, about a good 10, 10 or twelve feet from the garage where it sits now. Okay. And the prior. Um, building inspector said, oh, that shouldn't be a problem. And we were going to have this meeting done like two or three months ago. And then he extended it because he wa cause he wanted to do like two of these at once, like a month later. And yep. then the month later, and then it was like the coronavirus thing going on. Right. I've got the information I need, Andrew. Okay. And, and so then, and you're going to add... Uh, so, so the, the overall change just for my notes, so I can, uh, write it up. The overall change is going to be the footprint is extending eight inches to the left, two feet, uh, to the, to the front. Um, and, and then you're going to be adding some height on it. You're adding a half a story on the top of it. Exactly. Exactly. Because the house has a tiny backyard. It has a nice, decent front yard, but there's no basement. There's a crawl space. Okay. So we were hoping to add some storage to, to the garage. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be look nice. What's there now is just kind of just a shed. So your um, reason for doing this is that it's uh, no worse. It's not more detrimental. In fact, it might be an improvement. Oh, oh, without a doubt. It's going to be a 10 times better. It's going to look nicer. It's going to be more appealing. It's going to be more useful. It's going to be brand new. It's costing like $20,000. That What's standing there now is like a shed. I mean, if either... It's a one-car shed. Yeah, it's a one-car shed. So if any of you drove by, um, you could see that. It's right around the corner from, from the town hall. Are there... Are there any are, are there any neighbors or anyone else, uh, uh, on the call? I know I see uh, uh, Brian Pearson joined. I'm not sure what, if you're here for this meeting or for one of the next ones. But is there is there anyone else that wants to say anything about this uh, application? I'm here for another one. <laughs> um, Linda or Jason, you want to make a uh, make a motion? Uh, sure. Um, I make a motion to. 
um, what's the term, grant uh, variance for the construction? A finding, a finding excuse me. A finding to construct um, a new uh, detached garage um, with the new footprint outlined uh, in the description. Linda, do we have a second? Yes, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, you're, uh, you're all set. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your shed. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Take care. Let's get let's we let me let me just call the meeting to order here. So it's seven fifteen now. So we'll call our our second uh, our second hearing here. It's a request for a variance by Mr. Alexi Levine, thirty seven Spruce Hill Road, to allow a newly built shed to remain within uh, the allowed zoning property line setbacks. Um, Mr. Levine, uh, you want to just tell us what you're here for, what you're what you're looking for? Yeah, um, we recently built a shed that was just under the requirements for a building permit. Um, as far as the size and um, we mistakenly built it too, a little too close because there's a 50 foot setback rule from the road and a little too close to the side. I don't have a neighbor on that side. Well, I, I, it's a, an access road to farm acreage. Um, my contractor was thinking that the setbacks were the same as Northampton. He's made a mistake. Um, and it's kind of the only spot on the property where it could fit. Um, it's a, 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 the person who called in a, a complaint was complained that we were building without a building permit. They didn't have any gripes about uh, the location. Um, the building uh, mm -hmm. inspector was his first day on the job. He came out and he said we were in violation of the setbacks and he said, we should apply for a variance. So here I am. I also want to say I could, I'm not sure, but I could probably walk right out there with my computer and you could see it if you want me to. Um, I, aside from that application, I included some color photographs. I'm not sure if you can see them or. They came out black and white and very, might as well not be able to see them. So the front of the shed is behind three massive spruce trees. Um, that shield it from the road. It's about, I don't know, 10 feet behind those. And those are like 14 feet from the road. So it's 24 feet at its closest point to the road. It's parallel with the front of the house. So it seemed okay and it seems harmonious to fit in with everything architecturally to my untrained eyes and my contractor's untrained eyes, or he's trained probably. Um, we painted it a nice uh, dark green color to blend in. Um, my house has no, ba uh, I converted it to a two family a couple of years ago when I bought it. And, um, I live in the rear unit and there's no basement. So I was also looking for some storage. It's just a one bedroom apartment back here where I live now. So I was just hoping to get some storage. And also I started a little mini orchard in my backyard and I was, you know, it's nice to have a garden shed for that stuff. So. I'm happy to answer any questions you have or attempt to take a walk out there if you want me to. You said you built it, it was not there before. Correct. Correct. And, and you, and it's 24 feet. From the, from, from the front. front? Yep. And it's behind a line of huge trees. Okay. Spruce, Spruce Hill, Linda is um, like, it, it goes from route nine over to farm lane. You know, it goes like across, from um, like near like the barbecue place on Route Nine and like the the old like Kung Fu studio. Oh, okay, I know where that is. Thanks. Uh, family park. I will say I actually rode my bike by there the other day, and I said, "Wow, what a beautiful shed!" I wanted Thank to you. the design. It looks really great, so I do support it. <laughs> Thank you. I spared no expense. Um, so how much is it within the? offsets like how much is it encroaching upon those i'm sorry what's an offset or uh, how how close is it to the adjacent property line that the issue is i think it's about uh 10 to 12 feet so is it, it's too close to the road and too close to the side yet the side lot the house on the side yes there's no house on the side it's just an access road 
the property. So it's the property line. Yeah. Thank and you. the Andrew or Linda, remind me again. The offset from the road is fifty feet. Yes. It's supposed to be fifty feet. And off fifteen the road. from. And fifteen right. feet, I think, from the side. I can't tell from the map. There's one of the one of the drawings that you provided that has lots of letters and arrows. And Andrew, can you go to that? <laughs> it's down a couple pages. <clears throat> yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Um, it lists septic tank, and then it lists another old septic tank, and then a couple of leach fields. And my concern is that the shed may be too close to the actual septic tank, whichever one it is. So um, I went out there with a shovel and I found a tank, the closest tank to the shed. I don't know which one of these it is. Um, I think it's the not the leach field one, but the smaller one, judging by the location, if that's accurate. And that is uh, six feet from the shed. Okay. I'm not sure the requirements for that. It seems awfully close. Um, I don't, I'm not familiar off the top of my head, but I mean, my septic tank is pretty close out the front of my house. I don't think, I think. But uh, how, in terms of, um, Jason, I don't know, you might know this just from your professional job. If, if this, he didn't need a building permit based on the side of, size of this. So how, how would you know whether you're building on a, is there a rule against building too close to a septic tank? Not that I'm familiar with, no. Because he didn't, he wouldn't have need. There would be nowhere in the process to ever like flag find, it. even find it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the offsets from septic tanks, but uh, I mean, I mean, is it is it a dormant septic? Is it not being used? Is it just disconnected in in the ground or what? I believe it is active. I I am on a septic system. I'm. We don't have a sewer on our road. Yeah. So have you have you had it pumped ever? Uh, no, it had it. I just bought it uh, two years ago, and it had a Title V passed. Okay. And they put it in for you in the same spot. I, it's not a new tank. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think it was installed in 1989. Okay. I'm judging by the the same diagram we're looking at. There are um, Andrew and Jason. There are sections in the zoning bylaws about septic sighting but um it doesn't really mean i couldn't find anything about how close or how far it had to be from another structure that would that would be about that's a that's a that's about where you would put your septic system though right for the house but that, that that's like if you're building a septic system there would be a rule about where how close that could be to something else but it doesn't i, I don't know i'm just I'm not sure. I just, I, mean, I don't know. Whenever, that, whenever you put in a septic tank anyway, it's designed by an engineer with specialty leach fields and such. Yeah. I'm just saying, I don't know that it would be, I don't know that he's in violation of anything even because he didn't need a building permit. So it's, it's only an issue about the, the setback, the, the side and, and front setback, because I don't think, I don't think that he like, if, if he was, if your septic system was 50 feet off the road and 15 feet off the side lot, and you wanted to build something that encroached on that, I, I don't see how that would be in violation of anything, would it? Well, Not that I can think of. It seems to me that the building inspector would have said something. Um, he didn't need a building permit though. Right, but then you said, Mr. Levine, that the building inspector came by and said you were in violation, but he didn't say anything about septic. No, that's correct. Okay. And it's just, the shed is just slab on grade, correct? There's no slab. It's just sitting on, um, we used what's called diamond piers. Yeah. So yep. we, okay. we didn't want to disturb the tree roots. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're not excavating down and I mean, I can't see how one you would even, it's potential, it's possible you wouldn't even know the septic is there. Yeah, that's true. And it's not something that you would necessarily have to detail in a building permit either. Okay. That sounds wonderful. Oh, in, in this, in this picture here that, that we have of the property, the the um the shed would be like off the front left corner of the house there in line with in line with wh where the house is in line. Correct. Can you put your mouse over the house, Andrew, so I know which one I'm looking at? This this is the. Okay, that's the house there. Okay. This whole, this, this whole thing, right? 
Yes, oh, okay. it's long. Yeah. Okay, I understand now what I'm looking at. So the the it's right here, Jason, would be yep. where the exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you see it from the road? Uh, you can see it, but it's pretty sh sheltered behind, like I said, th yeah. big trees, and it it's not it doesn't pop out. Most people probably wouldn't notice it. I um. I, I don't I don't have a uh, I don't have a problem with it I um, what's over on the right uh, that does probably really matter uh, it's already built mm -hmm. um, there's no neighbor on that side so you're not really encroaching I don't, I don't see it as a safety issue being too close to the road because the house it's in line with the house and all those houses are probably too close to the road on that on that on spruce hill there they're all they're all kind of in line mm -hmm. so I don't, it's not really out of out of um step with the general character of the neighborhood either um in terms of like a safety issue and being on the too close to the road on a corner or something like that um i don't know i what you, you guys have any any other you have any other concerns no. If, no. Linda, if you don't have any questions or anything, I'd make a motion. A motion is fine with me. Okay. Um, then I make a motion to allow a newly built shed to, uh, shed to remain as is, excuse me, um, as detailed. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, you're all set. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I don't. I wonder about that septic thing, though. Like the, I don't see. I mean, like my septic's only like ten feet out in front of my house. It's like literally right next to the sidewalk. I think. I don't know. That's something I'm to look into. How deep, how deep, I don't have a septic system. How deep is the septic? Uh, like how, how, how far under the surface? Two feet. So if you were building like those piers probably go down three feet for like the frost or something, right? They would go below four feet. Yeah, so you would hit it. But I mean, like the only issue I could see if like if you wanted like crazily, if you wanted to build over a septic would be building over a leach field. That would probably be a big no-no. Yeah, leach field's a problem because even driving over it can... Yes. Yeah, because it's all engineered yeah. sand and layers and everything. Mm -hmm. I I just like kind of thought that, like, yeah, how how would you, like, he wouldn't. I, I don't I don't like see that you would ever be found to be like in violation of that based on what he said that he didn't need to get a permit. But so it's no, especially with no excavation. You know, it's not like you'd be potentially disturbing any lines or sand that might be put around the uh, septic. Yeah, it might not be in violation, but it might be a problem if he doesn't pump his tank. Well, if you can't get the lid off, yeah. <laughs> I remember he. I remember he came before us. I recognize that name. Wasn't he the gentleman that was trying to buy the North Hadley uh, Recreational Hall? Or fire department? Oh, was he? I think that's him, wasn't it? I don't know. Uh, or who was who was lined up to purchase it at that time? Yeah, he said he had a two-family home too, so I think he came to get a special permit for the two-family home. That's right. We're just looking at the mass builders. See if I can find offsets for septics. It was it's mentioned somewhere in the zoning bylaws under site plans, but I couldn't see that it had any particular application to his app his to his uh, request. But it looked like he had more than one septic there, an old one and a new one mm -hmm. on that drawing. I couldn't really tell. 
to be honest, until Andrew pointed out the house, I didn't know what I was looking at. All I, all I saw were the septic tanks drawn. I didn't realize that that long structure was the house. We have to wait till exactly 7.30, Mr. Pearson. Okay, it just clicked over on my computer. Okay, me too. Okay. All right, so we, uh, I'll call the, uh, the third hearing here. It's a request for a variance by Sierra Berte, 12 Breckenridge Road to raise and house chickens within the residential district. Mr. Pearson is uh, here on, on uh, Ms. Berte's uh, behalf and he's gonna present the, her I, application. I am in charge of the chickens. So uh, yes, we're zoned residential. Uh, it's kind of strange because the we're on Breckenridge Road, which is right off of Mount Warner, and the uh, I guess it's kind of the north side of the road is zoned agricultural, and we're zoned uh, residential only on this side of the road. So we would like a variance for uh, raising the chickens. We plan to have right now we're planning to have eight chickens we may expand our flock to ultimately 15 chickens um, in a coop no roosters are planned does anyone else have chickens around there uh there's a guy at the top of the road right you know where the entrance to carl's excavating there's a house there with a wooden fence and he has chickens like free range there and then um, a little it's actually Mount Warner like um, it's probably three or four hundred yards before you get to North Maple there's a house that has some goats and uh, that side might be agricultural because that the guy that does all the squash has his farm over there so maybe Mount Warner is agricultural but um, they just did a variance um, for Phil Shumway we border with him on the uh, south side of our property and he got a variance for horses and he's um, built the barn and so um, our one of our um, bordering properties has horses on it so um, I remember that case he brought it to the board it was like a year ago or something maybe a little yeah. more you part of that one Jason yep um, yeah I don't know just it's a weird one. It's a weird uh, issue here because most of the town is agricultural residential and there's this one part of the town that's zoned residential because of sort the of density. a relic of how they uh, thought that they were going to zone back in like the seventies, I guess. So uh, you end up with this weird thing where these houses aren't any closer than anyone, any, they're not any closer on top of each other than anything else. And there's a, a weird zoning quirk that the houses on one side of the road are, agricultural residential and the houses on the other are residential and they're all really identical um much. which is why we what we we're dealing with with the horse situation that people had a ho people had horses across the street from there <laughs> at one point and that guy had a bunch of property and he couldn't uh, have horses by rule yeah and it's funny this side of the road is probably less dense than the other side of the road that's agricultural because there's like frollo is there and that you know we're on like Point, we're almost 0.9 acres, so we have a pretty good size lot. Yeah. I was looking. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I was looking in the zoning bylaws before we started, um, and I found something interesting I, I hadn't known was there. But on um, under residential use regulations, it allows, it specifies permitted use, and it includes. Um, 3.1.1.5, it includes agriculture, horticulture, and floriculture uses. That surprised me, but it is there. Under residential? It's on page mm, DB.5. Well, there's no page number, but. Yeah, I got you. It's 3.1 3 residential districts. 
3.1.1.5. Did some did anybody tell you that you couldn't have the chickens? Did the building inspector say the zoning enforcement officer say you couldn't have the chickens? No, I I reached out to uh, uh, the new guy um, Scott is it? I don't remember his name. Who who was like. Uh, I I reached out to the building inspector and he said Quinlan. Yeah, Tommy. And he said, uh, you know, go through this process. I have no problem with it. I reached out to the health inspector. I have an email from them. They have no problem with it. And you know, I did the, um, the butters list and sent it all out. And you know, a few of our neighbors who we're friends with were like, let us know if you need support or whatever. And nobody nobody opposed it that I'm aware of. That's it. interesting. I think I think Linda's probably I think Linda's probably right there. I, I think the one of the reasons that the horse one was different is because horses are kind of a um, like a Lime weird stuff. they're a weird like pet slash like livestock thing. And I think we I think we were thinking that that didn't fall under agriculture, but chickens might feel a little bit more like agriculture than having like a pet horse. But I, are you planning on having any fencing? I know you mentioned a coop. Are you going to keep them restrained to the property or are you letting them kind of free range? We're going to build a coop um, to house them and then it'll have a fenced yard to protect them from, there are foxes around here. So for security, but um, if we're around, we'll probably just free range them and keep an eye on them. You know, if we're, we, you know, I work from home and look out the window and see the backyard. So uh, I know they don't go too far, but on an acre, they could wander a bit. Right, right. Um, coyotes up on Mount Warner, you know. Oh, yeah, we hear them. They, they do a lot of howling. Um, yeah, so we have, a, actually, we have an old, she I think it's a sheep fence from the 40s or something that goes up one side of our property. And then Phil on the back side said, feel free to let them roam. And then Andrew and Courtney on the other side, they were, you know, fine with it, too. So we're pretty close with our neighbors and stuff. Um, so shouldn't be an issue, but just to answer your question, you know, we'll have, them um, basically, um, guarded, you know, at night and stuff and, and enclosed a hundred percent and then probably free range them when we're around. Okay. And so you, you, um, the back of your property there where the coop is going to be butts up to that, that land that we were dealing with, with, uh, with Phil. Yes, we're on the we were we butt up to the two acres that were put into um, restriction. He, he can't build on it, so it's actually kind of nice for us. It's I don't know what you call it, a conservation easement or something, but um, so we're we're kind of butt up the back side of his property. You know, you probably need a permit for that coop. <laughs> uh, well, it, it's uh, four by eight. It's my. Uh, sketch uh i wouldn't call it a, a, a real plan but um and i you know i know i'm clear like it has to be 15 feedback right from my mm -hmm. neighbor yes that's my that's my plan but you know no no uh septic or running water or electric or anything like that <laughs> just the basic um <clears throat> so yeah so i'm i'm not uh I'm not 100 percent sure that uh, a variance was technically required here, but I don't see any problem with it. It's kind yeah. of similar to the horse situation. Um, it might be a different situation if a bunch of neighbors were complaining about it, but nobody has uh, showed up to contest it either. So uh, I, I don't uh, I don't have a problem with it. Um, you think 15 is 15 chickens the, the most you would ever really want to have? Because I think we probably should put uh, you know a number on the variance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think it would go above that. Yeah. Um, we should probably stipulate. Yeah. So just, you know, we should put something on there just so that we don't end up with a commercial chicken farm there after you sell the property someday. <laughs> Can we just... You sell it to the Purdue's and then, and then the neighbors are going to the Purdue's. Top it at a thousand and I won't... <laughs> 
max 1,000 chickens. No, I, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't go over 1,000. <laughs> Do you agree to 15? <laughs> All right, let's stop at 15. <laughs> You want a motion, Andrew? Yeah, that makes it makes sense to me. I move that we grant the variance for having chickens on Breckenridge Road. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Good luck. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you too. Stay safe. You too. Thanks. Is that it for the agenda tonight? Or we have one more? That's it. I don't know who, I'm not sure someone, Valerie Hood popped on there, which was actually another person that had already been before the board, but I don't know. She left. Might have just been looking. Yeah, she disappeared. Well, let's wrap it up. I think that's it then. So, uh, everyone. The only, thing I'm, I'm, only thing I'm concerned about to tell Jennifer or somebody is that we really didn't get any people coming on, a butters. Um, no. Or, you know, people protesting and that might be okay or it might be not okay well as long as the notice is legal in the paper i mean that's up to that's people's own prerogative to come in if they so wish um i mean everything seemed to be up to snuff so far on that so yeah i mean i guess i'd hope if they felt strong enough they would have logged in to do it yeah i'm good me too Okay, then uh, we can go ahead and uh, we'll close the meeting. And uh, until next time, hopefully we'll be in uh, person at some point again. It'd be nice. It'd be nice. All right. Have a good night. Okay, bye, guys. Keep safe.